Hey guys, thank you for stopping by to step in a living keto. Um, today I'm going to go over something very uh, different. I'm going to show you how to make your own dog food, okay? So what I do is this, you know, uh, some people um, look and they say, okay, well, you know, uh, I need a special knife to do butchering and stuff like this. So I'm just going to go into the basics of this. I just have this little Coruscant knife that my wife bought, right? It's very sharp right out of the box but I sharpen it anyway, so then this way it's very sharp. But you really just need like a really good point like this one. And if you have a really good point like this one, you really don't have anything to, really to worry about. So what we're gonna be working today with is, I bought old chicken quarters, right? And if you buy a five pound bag of these, you see, oh, well, I'm sorry, 10 pound bag of these, only cost you about $7, okay? So seven bucks for that whole entire thing, and then uh, you'll need one pound of your more fattier, beef and as you can see it's only uh three dollars and fifty cents so no big deal there um chicken gizzards which are kind of hard to find if you get the ones that actually have hearts and more hearts and uh or 50 percent hearts and gizzards it's better but you can see that there is hearts in here so i mean i i use it and the dogs love it and also the cats could eat it as well um also i have chicken livers um, and these are the four components that I basically put in besides, oh, I'm sorry, that and that. Okay. So, for some weird reason, I, I used the, I, I was taking the, the, uh, carrots and I was peeling them up and getting them, but I got the whole peas and carrots thing one day and I put it in and the dogs just seriously <laughs> love it and the cats also love it. And we use this sweet potato as well. You know, I mean, you know, you can go as, you know, as far as you want to go with this, you know, you can make it as healthy as you want to go, but that's it, okay? So right now, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to de deconstruct one of these um, chicken for you, so then this way you can actually see what goes on. So right now, I'm going to put on some uh, gloves that I got from Harbor Freight for 10 bucks. I'm going to put those on the five mil gloves. They're the cheapest ones they got, but they're actually pretty good gloves. So you really don't need to wear these, but what do you call it? It, it helps because when you're pulling the skin off of the uh, chicken, uh, it doesn't kind of like flop everywhere and it'll make it much easier for you when you're actually trying to handle it. Okay. So one of the things you're going to want to have is you're going to want to have a bowl that you can actually put the uh, stuff into. Okay. So, get some of this stuff out of Real quick up here. Okay. So first, we're going to take up an entire piece of chicken here. So you can see there's a lot of stuff on it. So right away, I like to trim. Uh, I'll right. Uh, actually, I'll take the, the skin off right away. So pretty much, you go down the line and you start pushing towards the backbone, out like this. You pull as much as possibly possible, and then you pull it all the way off. Like so. Now, if you're on keto, you could take this skin and you can make this into keto crisps. But in this particular case, I'll probably save about half and I'll use this as fat for the dogs. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to, this is all stuff that, that you're going to want to like cut off. So then this way it's, you know, all this stuff is edible. And the only reason that we're really doing it this way is so this way you don't have any kind of extra bones that might be inside the um, inside the mixture. Now I'm not intending on I wasn't intending on grounding this up. So now if you see over here, there's a line right here. See it? And you just like glide across that line. And if you do it, you know, I, I'm going to do it a little quicker. So you go down the line like this, and then you break it, and you'll see the bone. And then what you want to do then is just strip it off the bone, pretty much. And then that's it. Now you can take this and you can make stock with this. But in this particular case, we're not going to. Now you're in this position right here. Right? So right down here, you see this line? With most, most butchering and stuff like that, you want to follow the lines. Okay? So if you follow the lines and you go down like this and you look... You know, you're just following down the line. So, you don't want to cut yourself. 
So be careful. It's a very sharp knife. Alright, but once you get here, you want to stick this in here, go like that there, and then you can, without pulling the bone down, <laughs> pull that through, and you'll do the same thing on this side. Alright, and then you get under it, and go through, then you take the whole thing and scoop it together like so. This is where it takes a little bit of muscle, and then you cut right down here like this in a rounding motion. Okay, you do that, there you go. Now also, this trick is good not only for dog food, but if you want to do this for your home, Look at this beautiful cutlet you have. You have a little bone here that I have to get out, but see the look at the, look at this cutlet. So you know you can actually save money on making cutlets and stuff like this. So it's one of the things I like to do. Save money where I can. It's one of the things my, my father liked to do. Alright, so there you go. So now I'm just gonna put everything together. I'm gonna do all of these up. I'm not gonna bore you with all of this, but I'll show you how much it is inside the, the bowl when I'm finished. So I'm done with this portion of uh, cutting everything up. Um, it turns out it only took me about 15 minutes. So as you could see, I, this time I segregated the bones. As you could see, this is a large assortment of bones right over here. So if you wanted to make a nice bone stock, this, you know, <laughs> it don't get no better than that. This is, you know, uh, when I was five quart, so you have about four quarts of uh, stock. Whereas this is all, all together boneless now. So as you can see, um, I th it's weird because I started thinking, hey, if I'm gonna put the, if I'm gonna leave the uh, skin on, why, why would I bother even taking it off? And I just uh, rolled it out and actually saved me a little bit of time. Because usually what I'll do is I'll take all the skin off and then you know just go into the uh, fillets down here. Sorry if I'm grossing you out because some people don't like to touch meat. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, these are perfect cutlets and all. So, <laughs> it's funny. So, uh, also, you know, you could check through and see if there's any parts. Like, uh, like this part here, I don't like. I'm going to cut that off. Even though it'll probably, eh, it's probably just a tenant, you know, so it is. But uh, maybe something chewy for the dogs and everything. It'll break down over time anyway. So I'm not too worried about it, but... That's it, yeah. So now we're gonna take all of this. I got the juice in the bag still, right here from all the juice that was collected from this juicing, and that's what I use as as its liquid. Okay, so um, I'm not adding anything different than what is actually natural to this. So it's all natural ingredients, uh, pretty much so, except for I do something a little. I I put a little bit of a uh, um, beef stock in it. <laughs> but just like a squirt so it, it'll you know make it taste bad they seem to like it but um just use a little bit for, th for this whole entire uh, amount the sodium factor wouldn't be really that bad but it could be for a dog or a cat so you do have to watch out for things like that so off into the pot okay guys this is the inside of my uh my ninja foodie that's what i use to cook my stuff in and everything like this you could use a crock pot um, anything just low settings and the longer the better I usually use it to 12 hours and just let it go you know somewhere it, it, even in eight hours it would be done but that's pretty much what I use so my first thing is my chicken livers I'll go ahead and uh, you can get chicken livers pretty much anywhere they're usually between a dollar and two dollars I think I paid uh, two dollars for these so you just pour them in just the way they are and everything like that. Now with this over here, that, that chicken juice, I'm gonna pour it into here and then pour it in. Okay, so then this way we're using the chicken juice. Can see with the chicken juice, it's like almost the whole entire cup here. So this is um, uh, 20 fluid ounces. So, you know, that's a lot. So as you can see, you got a ni nice amount of juice in there. And meantime, you're cleaning out all that normal stuff that the dogs and cats love. That's what you want to do, and then you want to take this thing off. <laughs> this package thing. And uh, you gotta make sure everything's in there. Then we'll stick the burger in there. And then, so what I like to do, I like to just break it up right off the bat. 
Now another thing you could do is you can you could put real steak in here if you want. That's up to you. Um, this is just to add the extra flavor. I, what I did find that people like is that in Walmart they have these um, they're like a, not they're, they're sirloin steaks that are used for steak sandwiches um, in the freezer section, and you can use two or three of those as well if you wanted to, you know, um, as in, but it's like six dollars for for that where this is only three dollars so you're only paying half the price there all right so i'm gonna put in my vegetables now if i can find my knife i can find my vegetables there we go Sweet potato and everything. And oh. now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start piling the meat in there. Piling the meat. See, got a lot of meat here. A lot, a lot. Oh, you're gonna love this. Your animals will love this. My cats, my dogs, just love it. You know, nice big pieces of fat like this. Just yummy. Actually, I got a couple skins in the refrigerator. I'm gonna Okay guys, here we go. Um, it, it's all done, so I'm just gonna turn that off, okay? And then uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go inside and I'm gonna show you what this looks like in here. And that's pretty much what it looks like in there. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to use this and I'm going to squish down on this and break all of this up. As you can see here, break it up. Then after this, I'm going to add rice into the mixture. See how juicy it is? It's like crazy. Some people take this and put it into a blender and actually pate it. I've never done that. They seem to like, like you know, the meat being all nice and big like this. I, I only use this one because of the um, the skin and break it up nice and all.
Yeah, you want it to look pretty much like that. I think that's one of the advantages, like the gears that it's in and everything. It's really nice. All right, so the next next step is going to be I'm going uh, I'm going to put some I'll put some uh, what do you call rice in there. Put it down kind of here. Make sure that you can see. a little bit it gets to it a little bit easier when you when you do it this way all right so then I just try to from the bottom swoop it around work my way up swoop it get it all going so my next one next portion I'll be actually putting them into these tuppers that I Gosh, see, it makes a lot, and then it's funny because you can actually eat this. You know, this, this smells actually great. The aroma that comes through there, but I like to really get the rice going in there. It's, this way, it's like pretty much throughout everything. Now, some of the recipes out there you'll see on the internet they put eggs in it. I don't, but it seems like my dogs don't like it. When I do put the eggs in there, I, I gotta try with just the eggs themselves and um, let out the shells. Um, so, that, that's pretty much it for, for, for this portion. Next is gonna be, it'll get, to, uh, I'll show you in a couple minutes, this is gonna get, um, it, it's gonna cook the rice. Once the rice is cooked, then it's gonna be ready to put into um, containers or bags or however you do it, but you just let it cool down at this point.